So, we're here with Brandon Harris. What's up? Um, it's Rug Riffs episode four. Yeah. We've come this far. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, we don't have Logan here tonight, so I don't know if the levels are going to work and stuff like that, because that's what he does for us. Um, so, what were you playing tonight? Uh, I don't know what I was playing. I was playing something in the moment. <laughs> Let's start with your bass, which uh, is... You my got a bass this time. Just uh, my bass is a Jack Cassidy signature by Epiphone. Beautiful bass, I like it. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, it's nice because it's got the it's got the pickup in the middle as opposed to most hollow bodies where they're on the neck or the bridge. And I just like it in the middle because I've always played P basses for how long, so it's nice to have it in the middle. There you can play it. And plus, you get the humbucker. Yeah, exactly. Nice, cool. yeah. Awesome. So you were going. From your base, yeah, through our sinusoid licorice cable into Whammy Five. Yep. And you were using what edition of that Whammy? That's the twentieth anniversary. Oh, okay. Oh, I got okay. it as a grad present, and that was when I was like drumming all the time, oh, and cool. so it just sat in my closet. And then I like kind of got into like effects and. A few years ago, and then I was like, "Oh, I have one of these in my closet." Yeah. <laughs> and then kind of started using it. Nice. So you were using it on the two octave up mode. Yeah. In the sweet, sweet. And then going from that into the old blood noise haunt fuzz. I don't even. Th I think I was using that before we we're going into. Oh mode, right. But yeah, I don't even think we got a clip of that. So. Oh, all right. Well then. That's kind of next time. <laughs> um, one thing you did use a lot. Oh, the tentacle. The Earthquaker tentacle. That thing is gnarly. Um, yeah, just straight octave up. When you're above the 12th pickup, it's like, ju or 12th fret, it's like just the octave up. Oh, yeah. That, that thing's, I want to give one of those to you. For the price, too, that's, for just that simple octave up can make so much of a difference. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool to like, I like it, I honestly ran it before, like when I set up like a board, I'll have it like in between fuzzes because it like, it does such different things whether it's before a fuzz or yeah. after. It's, yeah, I noticed with that Big Muff, it made it scream, like, I've never heard that Big Muff go so loud, yeah. ever, it was really nice. So you were going from the tentacle into the... Hot tone? How do you say it? Uh, hot tone. Hot tone. I just picked up that guy yesterday, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, the Hot Tone Soul Press. I bought it originally because I wanted it as an expression pedal for my phase shifter, but the phase shifter ha er, only takes like a specific expression pedal. It's the Roland expression pedal. So it wouldn't oh, really? take that one. So then huh. I was like, crap, well, what am I going to use it for? Should I just return it? But then I just started playing around with volume swells on it and... So you were, are you just using it as volume pedal? Yeah, that's all it is right now, it's just a volume pedal. Okay, yeah. so it, what is it do expression and volume? And wah. Oh, it does wah too? Yeah, the wah is nice, like, I like using this wah here, but it it's kind of nice having it because it really gives a pluckier sort of wah sound as opposed to this one being really low end and bassy. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to have that variance. Plus, if I have it before my compression, it just sounds a lot crisper as opposed to that one yeah. after. But. Yeah, that makes sense. That's like a big debate where there's like no real right answer but yeah. people definitely prefer it either like before their drives or before their chain or after yeah exactly so you got the best of both ones yeah. one on each end yeah um then electro harmonics bass big muff high oh yeah uh, bass boost you had the tone pushed all the way up on that guy yeah tones push the sustain i usually have to keep it at about uh, what would that be i'd say almost three o'clock two o'clock i guess yeah because if i crank the sustain full oh man like it's nice when you're playing a show because you can really get that feedback going when you're changing into a song but yeah when you're doing little things like <laughs> trying to play in a quiet environment, you can't have that thing turned up. It's just yeah, like trying the not whole to wake the neighbors. Yeah, strings are going yeah, and everything. Exactly. I guess that's one downside to the hollow body, but it's kind of a nice effect if you like that noise stuff. Like that's perfect for it. Cool. Yeah. And then the Boss PH3. Yeah. Phase shifter. That one you left on the whole time, didn't you? Yeah. I, I, ever since I started playing bass, I was a phaser guy. I like love phaser i used to have um 
the MXR Phase 90. Oh, okay. But I actually traded Reed for this one because it had the step feature on it. Yeah. So it sounded really digital. Like the only difference is the MXR Phase 90 is an analog and this one's digital. And the analog's nice because you don't lose much of your volume, but this thing's cool because it's got way more features to it. You know, I'd, I kind of like to make my bass sound like a synth and yeah. the pedal really brings it out for Yeah, me, that so. definitely. Yeah, you can do that pretty easily with a phaser. It yeah. doesn't take many steps between just dry signal and synth. Yeah, it's nice. Um, did you use your Behringer? I, yeah, use that in combination with your um, echo chamber there, and it was it was pretty cool. Like, I just like that one. It's a cheap analog delay. It's yeah. nothing fancy. I mean, you can get the Boss version of it. That's I mean, you pay more, but it's pretty much the same circuit. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. I don't know. It's that's probably my second pedal I bought like when I was in high school. And yeah. For some reason, never parted with it. But. Yeah, delay is such a like I I love delay it's yeah. probably like my favorite out of like if i were to just pick one effect but it was like I, the first time i got like an actual delay unit it was the tc electronic the alter ego oh yeah, yeah x4 one and uh i was like oh i've got a song oh i've got another song oh i just wrote <laughs> another song and it was just like you just play something through a delay and then pretty soon it was like these are all the same things <laughs> like, yeah. it was like all a couple droney notes yeah, yeah. exactly but yeah. It, it makes it awesome that way you know at least it feels atmosphere you can fill it yeah That's and it was nice really cool i noticed like right away when you did turn it on like they were both running semi long repeats yeah but because they were offset different times it like plink plunked yeah like different like it would it's almost like your your turn signals with like the car ahead of you at a stoplight, how it's like oh, they'll yeah, be they offset line up and, and then, then they they'll line up. up and then they'll yeah. So that was cool. Always that red light challenge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then another hot tone. Yeah, uh, the hot tone comp pedal. It's a little guy. It's just a compression is all. Yeah. I, I just I bought it. I like compression on my bass. It mm -hmm. really cuts through those frequencies a lot better. And actually, I used to use the Boss CS2, I believe it's called. Yeah. Uh, I used to use that for a while, and I got rid of it because it just it caused way too much trouble like it all i could hear was just like this clangy metal more than anything oh it yeah. just caused too much trouble and then parted with the compression pedal for a while and i was running on room my board and i was down at the conservatory and looking at it like oh that might fit on my board and they were just ranting and raving saying it doesn't cut your low end or anything yeah. and i was i did everything i could to try and cut low end and you can't like it's nice you can get that treble going as high as you can yeah. And you still got low end coming through. Like it's really nice. Awesome. It's definitely like a good uh, compression pedal for a bassist. That's really yeah. Cool. So, that's cool. Yeah. And then that wah is. Uh, that's just the Crybaby yeah. bass wah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Dunlop. Yeah. That one I use. I have it at the end of my chain because I like to have everything compressed and wad with this one because it's kind of cool. It makes kind of sort of a dubstep sort of wa bass wobble with it. Oh, okay. That's the reason why I have it at the end is because, I don't know, I like, it's nice making those electronic bass wobbles Gives in the middle of songs. Wub wub. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all it is wub wub. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. And then yeah. you're using my Ditto. Yeah. X2. How'd you like it? I really liked it, actually. I like the basic form of it. It's not like, because the only ever loop pedal, only other loop pedal I ever used was uh, the Boss one. Oh, okay. I don't like that it's all one you know one, one button for everything for, right yeah. like this is nice and simple you know like normally on, on a boss one i'd use it and my loops would always constantly go off this one i don't know like how many loops i had going on in the songs and that's one fun thing i find works. like really good about that is like it like the clarity like they never bleed together yeah ever and and that's i just that was the first looper i bought and i haven't felt a need to get a different one i want i do want like they just came out with a newer one the yeah. x4 and oh, that yeah. one's like you can have two different tracks oh yeah and it's just a lot more it's kind of like the rc20 in a way from yeah, Boss. yeah yeah it's a lot more toying around you can do with it oh like, yeah for sure yeah i know that's cool and uh, yeah so that worked good and then after that we we're running into my Hi-Max echo chamber which is an eight track tape delay there's a tape in there and I've had like a few analog delays and like analog emulators and yeah some pretty good delays and like still nothing will sound as natural and yeah, as warm as that. Yeah, that's what I was about to say there was it sounds 
incredibly natural like it doesn't sound so synthetic I, I don't know yeah. what other way to put it it's just it's cool and you can tell it's an old piece of equipment it's still got that smell to it like <laughs> that old smell my amp, my bass amp has the same thing too where it's yeah. that weird sort of old 70s 80s smell yeah it's nice and <laughs> musty there's the eight track there we go um and it's awesome you can like you can buy things to I've read things on how to clean up in the inside and yeah. stuff and make it sound crisp, but like I leave it. I like the oh, horrible. Oh yeah, don't ever change. That, yeah, man. that thing is just nice. Like, I enjoyed it. And then uh, into my Fender concert, um, it's just a sixty watt guitar amp, but it had a bass in it. It handled it. <laughs> yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, no, it, it actually probably helped it too having the octave up on it probably yeah. accentuated way more than what a bass amp would that's so that's kind of nice we got the two yeah i never forward. thought about that yeah that's yeah. true cool, cool so where you've got your foot in quite a few different pools music wise yeah where can people find your music um i guess just on soundcloud the lonely jackals it's, okay. well oh i got another thing going on with uh tony our drummer um where it's called Panda Express Productions and we just do like random stuff like it's like electronic and hip hop and it's kind of that's mostly just like production on computer stuff but you can yeah. find it on there too Panda cool. Express Productions I'll throw some SoundCloud. I'll make sure there's links oh nice. links on all the posts there so you can get to share around there. um yeah so what when you're deciding cause this is not even close to like all the stuff you have no, for this sure. isn't. This is my cut down rate. So when you are doing that, consolidating what you want on your board, what what things like what's your process of elimination? Uh basically what I use in my songs, like I have a Behringer synth pedal, and I bought it because it was cool. I never bothered to use it in any of my songs because it was one of those weird pedals that. Sounds good on its own. But yeah. When you're playing in a band setting, it doesn't cut through. And that was like all my yeah. other pedals too. Like these ones are <laughs> my main pedals that you can actually hear when you're on stage. All yeah. my other ones, like my octave was, and I got rid of that one. I'm kind of bummed about that. But that one was really nice when I ran it through an EBY box into another amp. Oh, right, oh, right, the right. Low end, oh, man, it'd punch. But that's pretty much my only process of elimination is like what I can use on stage and what's easier to haul around yeah absolutely yeah because yeah. i only have like, i think like 15 pedals and i don't want to haul around 15 pedals yeah. i had them all set up on a board once and it was this weird garage makeshift board yeah. it was freaking huge so i could never use that anywhere i trip <laughs> yeah. over it so yeah yeah but yeah it's pretty much the main thing is i just go for what i can use Cool. Yeah. yeah, no, just the essentials. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Alright, well, yeah. thanks for coming over and doing that. That was awesome. Alright, it was fun. We got a bass episode. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Sweet deal. Yeah. Didn't sound like a bass, but it was a bass episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Alrighty. Cool. Sweet. Thanks, bud. Alright, no problem, man.